Okay, good evening everybody. Thank you so much for coming today. Today's topic is trading digital assets. And this is the reason why we're here. So SolidBlock um, is a private company which is an uh, issuance and trading platform for digital assets. I'm the CMO and partner at SolidBlock. Last year I founded an organization called Women in Block because I noticed that there are very few women in this industry and we need to uh, kind of showcase the ones that are success stories or have something to say. So that's why we're here actually to host um, Kiana Shek. She's a co-founder of DigiFinex. So uh, I'd like for all of you to welcome Kiana here. Why don't you introduce yourself and I'll get your presentation up. Um, good evening everyone, um, this is Kiana, I'm from Hong Kong, although we're headquartered in Singapore, basically I'm just traveling around. So before, uh, before blockchain, two years ago, I was in the AI industry, so very amazed by all these tech development because before I joined the technology sector, I was actually in banking. So all these years I stood in Hong Kong, people are rushing into finance industry and I feel, wow, what a glamorous platform. By the end of the day, is what matters is the technology. So that's why I, I took a huge step to switch from finance to tech. And I started with big data solution and then to AI industry. Then I figured out AI is too far away. Even though we see a lot of projects right now trying to tokenize the AI technology, sorry, it takes a decade to come. But blockchain is happening right now. That is why we started the exchange two years ago um, in Singapore. And that's Digital Phoenix. Okay. So today I'm trying to share was in store for crypto because in the past two years we go over all this bearish market, bullish market in Asia, in the States, there are so many obstacles that we've been through. So what's next in 2020? The big one. Okay, so DigiPhoenix, we're two year old and our accumulated transaction volume is over 60 billion uh, by, by the last quarter. Um, so a few numbers, just an overview of our exchanges. We have five offices headquartered in Singapore. We also have Hong Kong, Australia, and Korea. And we are top 10 by liquidity on coin market cap. So far it's still the most reputable ranking site and we have 3 million registered users even though the active user is around 10% honestly and we have 24-7 um, trilingual customer support and here's some number about less. So we are focusing actually just on spot market although we also offer OTC. Currently we are trying to launch our funds on the exchange because we believe that in the future we should embrace more derivative products like traditional finance market but it takes time but we need institutions to come in like the Wall Street people and different banks to adopt the technology so our quant fund we have up to a hundred percent ARR and also we have the STO in pipeline because we just secured the Australian license. So we are totally legitimate to do STO, IEO, whichever project wants us to support. That's us. Um, yeah, we're trying to comply with different uh, government, but because the Asia, in Asia, the Chinese very slow, the Hong Kong's following, and even though we've been in Singapore for two years, the Singapore government is uh, like delaying everything. So we're trying to secure other countries first. So our next station will be UK. So here are all the conferences I'm trying to share. Um, not like uh, sharing about how the exchange do it because it's very simple. Everybody knows what exchange does, but we're trying to educate the market to make sure that we get more um, traditional traders to join and trade crypto, like how they trade for us in the, in the past. 
So these are also different media we are featuring in and we work with. So if you are from a media company or you have friends working in a media company locally, we'll be happy to work together. And what we'll see is the top five crypto trends in the next year that we, while we're so optimistic about the market and while we're still here. I'll share a little bit of each of them. So everybody knows about the halving case. And we know that previously, every four years, there's a hype because of the halving. There are different discussions around this time, but what we see is that even though we believe that we trigger some new money coming in, hot money, the capitalist will, will be looking to the market, but still, it's not like the previous few times. We will say, even though that would be an increase or there would be more trading, more volume, but it takes time to go back to another peak for a Bitcoin price. So is it to the moon? It's not too fast. Everybody's talking about May next year because of the halving. But then look at the mining industry and look at the government articles. And because the government are trying to regulate and also they're trying to manage their own token, issue their own digital currency. So we we'll say even we are optimistic about the Bitcoin price in the next few years, but not next year. So we have to be really careful when we're investing. And then it's about Ethereum. A lot of discussion and I think arguments around, is it true, is it possible, because it's slow, it's not that effective, it's not like gold is different from Bitcoin. What we see is that because of the phase zero of Ethereum 2.0, it's gonna take place really soon, a few days, a week. Yeah, it's the birthday of Bitcoin also. That will trigger some uh, market hypes, but it's not sustainable. So we, we, what we're trying to say here is winter is still coming. But we can see this is a study by, I think it's a study by the blog, another research company. We are seeing that a lot of central banks and different banks are actually embracing this trend. But it really takes time because they are still trying to formulate the whole idea, trying to work around the blockchain technology to make sure that the banks, they can have their own control instead of being managed by other companies. So that's why the here we see, even though, especially in China, the People's Bank of China, because of the presidency's speech a few months ago, uh, we understand that it's happening in China, one of the large, largest market after the state. But then when it's happening, it really depends. It's all in the pipeline. And Libra. I know you guys have heard a lot about Libra. Either it's for real or it's just uh, gimmick by Mark. Um, what I want to share here is about the China market. We understand that one of the largest um, tech platform in China is Alibaba. So Alibaba is also trying to research and study what Facebook is trying to do and do a similar thing in China. So we say uh, if Libra, Libra is going to go live in the coming year, which I believe would happen. We will also look into the China market, the one operated by Alibaba. SDO. Uh, I think SDO, the discussion started 2018, but then everybody is just talking around it, but no one knows how to do it because it's not regulated. Uh, no one has a license. And last year, we see a lot of exchanges, including us, trying to formulate the whole product. But not until we get license and government support, we can launch the SDO and support SDO um, for our projects and our partners. And now, because we get the licenses, two, three, four more licenses we have, we are more supportive towards all these tokens. Because in the future, it's a must. What we, we discussed about real estate, it's part of it, and it's the largest pillar, one of the largest. Um, IEO is not sustainable. For sure, we cannot rely on utility token to, to build the whole crypto market. Then SDO must be the future. And 
and we can see because we need to find the right issuer, the right products, and right investors. That's why I'm trying to tour in different countries and look for local partners. Of course, this is the first time I'm trying to get in touch with the community here, but if you also have friends or you're interested in issuing STL tokens, please we can talk offline and furthermore. So here's something we can take to next step. And because I believe that um, the engineers, the projects here in Israel is very solid. That's why we are trying to look for local partners to do more marketing and education here um, in Israel. And uh, I always believe that we are not competing with other exchanges. We can, all the exchanges should work together to form alliance, to form the whole ecosystem because today we are trying to uh, attract the money from the traditional financial market, which I would, because I was in banks, so I believe that a lot of bankers are looking into this area, just waiting for the green light from the government. So any more questions, then we can take it here or offline. Thank you. Thanks. Guys, you have some questions so far? I'm sure. Clarification. So, hi. Uh, you said you're going to support uh, security token offerings in Australia? Or just the exchange? So, my question, and I'm a lawyer, my question is out of curiosity. From what I know, and I'm familiar with security laws, you have to uh, usually approve a prospectus for every security that you like to issue and sell to retail investors. So my question is, would you be, um, I'm guessing that not each project is going to now approve prospectuses. Yeah. So my question is whether you're going to act as a platform which is targeting qualified investors or what's your, what's your like, market strategy on that in order not to approve a prospectus for every project. Um, yeah, we even though not currently we are listing different projects, we go through a relatively strict DD process to make sure that it's not a scam. So far on our exchange, we have pretty much around 100 tokens. It's not like other exchanges; they have like even five times of our, our tokens. So, of course, we will go through all these stuff to make sure and try to maximize our understanding and protect our investors. And go, go back to XTO, we will for sure get, get all these green light from the regulators and compliance issues. We have compliance meeting every week to analyze all these projects into application. So we don't want to take risks. Anybody have any any other questions? Before I go to my own Q and A. Okay. So let me ask you a few questions myself. So you mentioned you came from into this industry because it was developing faster than the AI industry in which you were. Um, but yet I'm wondering if there's some sort of a personal story, why blockchain, why crypto, why exchange? Was that an op opportunistic decision or was it kind of a process? Um, okay. I will structure it like, first of all, I believe in FinTech because I had a master at CERN for finance and then I spent um, five years in technology from operator, building network, 5G to big data and then AI. I think we should combine the two and then the, the nearest thing I could think of about FinTech would be blockchain industry. And then the reason for exchange is, is kind of simple because I understand that the market that will be ups and down 
um, different development and the uh, noises, bubbles. So exchange is the easiest way to survive through winter because we break even in the first month. We control our costs, we manage the safety issue. We never had any hacking case on our exchange. I believe you heard of a lot of hacking case in other exchanges, but we didn't. So we're trying to make sure that we survive through winter, summer, good days, bad days, and protect our investors. So, um, what is going to be the main trend going forward? I know you outlined five things. If you had to choose one, like how would you describe 2020? Well, honestly, if for all these beginners and new investors, I would say just stick with Bitcoin. Just stick with Bitcoin. A lot of others is really oh, mostly about speculation. So stay with Bitcoin to make sure that you start with Bitcoin, even though it's a small amount, and try. Uh, we never we never learn until we try. So, okay. um, Rami? No, 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 stay there. You said you are coming from the banking system. Why you in your co-founder of the firm, I said, in your presentation. So my question, why you are not taking all the derivatives question that, that Rami asked. Since you're coming from a traditional banking system, uh, why not take uh, all the traditional industries you know, and make derivatives, the 500 billion industry, trillion, trillion sorry, trillion industry, take it bigger. Um, are you guys in a position to, to do such a thing? I get this question a lot. Um, first of all, it's not uh, it's not about earning the money but when I started the exchange. What I want is to spread the idea of blockchain, educate the people, my friends and family, and then the market and the public. Uh, and I think derivatives at this moment is too risky for anyone. And it's, it's risky in the financial industry, the traditional financial industry. And now is not the right moment to launch this product. Tech-wise, it's not complicated. And I believe my tech team, they are brilliant. They can just build a product like some other exchanges. But you're, you're like ripping off your users because they don't know anything about it and they're just blindly speculating or investing in it. They might lose everything. So I, I don't want to take that risk. That's why we are just focusing on spot market. Of course, as an exchange, I earn a lot by management fee, all, the, all these products. I can even do a lot of other stuff around it, but it's not the right thing to do. So I want to ask you, because we are at the Women in Blog Forum, um, so two questions on that. What's it like being one of the very few women, maybe the only one who co-founded an exchange? Um, and in general, what is your feel for this industry? Is it uh, more welcoming towards women or otherwise? Even though I, I'm also like part of the women in blockchain community, I say I don't see much difference between women and men in every industry at this century. I mean, the new generation, and uh, I believe the, the society is being more fair to us, so it's not an obstacle at all, and a lot of husbands are very supportive, and I believe, because I'm currently taking an audit executive program in INSEAD, and 30% of my classmates, they are, they are working mom, and I feel like, as long as the family is supportive, there's no, like, no, no difference. And especially in the blockchain industry, because it's very new, and somehow, I believe a lot of uh, my girlfriends are being more capable to manage all these business issues. 
All right, and um, the last question, the one before last. Uh, we see lots of exchanges right now, you know, the crypto and traditional. So how does an exchange differentiate itself? How do you differentiate yourself? After, I know it's a little bit cliche, but then after all, all the industry is the same. We, we see uh, different competitors. We, of course, we are not monopoly. Um, the key thing is about the team. When I'm talking about a team, it's more about the company culture and, and the management philosophy behind it. We are relatively a small team. We have less than 100 employees all over the world compared to uh, other tier 2 exchanges. Um, we are very, how to put it, um, small, smaller size, but we're very effective. We're very effective. That's why we do a better cost control. That's why we are not very high profile. We're not like spending huge market expenses doing sponsorship because it's not gonna work. We spend 80% of our revenue on security to make sure our investor users are well protected. So I believe the reason our employees are stuck here, our team is very collaborative, is because of the culture. So you're growing and sticking here for, for a while. Okay, awesome. So one of the messages that you gave today was that, you know, stick with Bitcoin, especially if you're a beginner. Um, I gathered a few things from your presentation, such as, you know, security tokens are coming, regulation is important, you know, especially strategy, and uh, watch out for the halving of the Bitcoin. Any other messages you want to leave the audience with today? I would very welcome every one of you to visit Asia. If you come to Hong Kong or Singapore, let me know. I'll host you around. Thank you.